Hello, Cherry the Samurai here, and what I've got today for you is a game of Age of Wonders. I tried to make a recording before, and I had my mic bited the whole damn time. <laughs> so I'm going to have to do another recording, basically. Um, I could commentate over the top of it, um, but I think there's something a little bit better about the crispness of recording it live and having a live conversation, so to speak, anyway. But uh, what I did before was sort of pick a custom map and just sort of dive into it with a lot of settings that I thought would be really fun. And the problem with that I found was is I didn't really know how to play the game. <laughs> so what I was thinking I could do for the first sort of few videos that I do do, <sighs> do do, <laughs> um, is essentially play through the beginning scenario here um, and then play the story realm. That way it saves on going through a lot of the customization settings um, and just gets used to some some settings of how the game might play. So we shall dive into this one. We'll, we'll play hard, because that's what I was doing in the last one. I'm very familiar with strategy games, um, but not so much with this one. So we've got here the Fields of Rebirth, the returning Wizard King's first preyed on small, bountiful, and harmonious realms to hone their skills. Will you be a protector or invader of this beautiful domain? And I'm also thinking of picking one of the pre-built factions just to start out with, so we can have a quick look at what we've got here. So fast healing, extra experience points, uh, structures with food income, um, unit benefits from close quarters stand formation together. Units deal 20% damage. That's actually really good. Um, the elves. Focus on the tome. Ah, oh, what, what tome did the humans get, actually? Tome of faith. Heal and support your units through the power of faith. What did the kitties get? I'm just seeing a Johnny from uh, Magic the Gathering when I see this guy. Very cool looking though. The Tome of Zeal. So you can get some fanatics. Negative effects are reduced. Extra experience points. Culture. Uh, sorry, not culture. That's civilization. <laughs> it's the same color, right? <laughs> so knowledge income and city stability. Both very good. And you get some good alignments as well. Um, we got the mountain dwarves here. Tough. Lots of defense. Yeah, when I made my own, um, I just sort of picked a bunch of options that look really cool. So we had dwarves riding spiders, <laughs> which just sounds amazing to me. We got another cat people. Shadow walkers. Necrotic goblins. That sounds kind of fun. Oh, they look so evil. Tome of souls. So, sneaky and fast regeneration, evil alignment things. Cities can negate city instability. That could be really good. Tome of the Horde for the rat people. Oh man, these guys look super evil. Corpse eating ability. What? Destroy target corpse and heal. Nice. The Crusading Croakers. Now I like... I like the name. His sword is bigger than him. <laughs> he looks like a very proud toad. They kind of remind me a little bit of the Gungans that were, that live under the water in Star Wars. What are these people? These are like elves, but like woodland elves maybe? Enthralled orcs. Oh, so you can make your leader human and your orcs can be... Uh, sorry, your know, faction can be orcs. That's really cool, actually. I didn't know that was a thing. Tome of Pyromancy. You can get extra physical damage. Sounds like it could be a fun one. Do Pyromancy backed up with the Horde. Might do something like that. Or maybe this. I think we'll try out Carissa the Red. Oh, you can edit them, too. So I could use this as, like, a base... What is your people's form? Chaos affinity and nature affinity. That sounds good. The first melee attack that hits in battle deals an additional 8 blight damage. 
dealing extra damage on the first strike in combat. It looks like a heal. It's kind of nice. What defines their society? So we can do corpse eating for HP minus ten alignment. The nearest city owned gains three mana and three food per tier of non magic origin units killed or lost after successful combat. I might change this one for something different. Might do this so we can get lots of units, make non magic origin units cheaper. Although this is quite nice. Start with an additional population, which is something quite good. Um, and starting with 20 stability and gold income is quite nice as well. When a term is unlocked, a random skill from that term grants six, minus 60% knowledge cost. Very good. That could help you get really get through your tome tech tree. I might actually do that. This is quite good as well because this is like extra casting points so you can do extra spells in combat which is quite nice. Yeah, so this could be the buff for the orcs, and then this could be, oops, yeah, this one. That could be like the bonus for our leader, the caster. Yeah, it is um, a beginner tutorial, so we're not gonna focus too much on that, but we like using, ooh, what's this, Fabled Hunters? Ah, no, not too bothered about that. Fisheries, naval unit bonuses. These are builder things. Battle mage units gain extra ranks. Uh, battle mage units and support units provide plus five combat casting points at the start of combat. That's quite good. The Scions of Evil. Cities gain extra draft, so that's for building units. And the Empire and your Empire gains five Imperium per level of evil alignment. So we could be evil and get lots of uh, Imperium for it. That could be nice. Starting with an extra scout for this one. Starting with an extra battle mage unit. We could do that. What did the one that we were going to go, the spell one, what does that do? Start with an extra combat spell unlocked. You know, we'll do that. That sounds fun. Choose your first turn um, we're definitely going to go Pyromancy for show. So let's grab ourselves the uh, extra manners for forests. You know, I love the way these, these um, abilities combine into each other. Oops, I've just picked that one and <laughs> I didn't mean to. Oh, that's so good. Uh, can we go back one? We can. So extra mana income, map wide casting points, and combat casting points per level of the Wizard King. Wizard Kings have the over a channel ability so they can cast an additional spell this turn. That's nice. This is like generally feels like the best one because it just gives you lots of unique bonuses but this feels very good if you're going to go for a magic focus which i think we are we'll do we'll do the magic focus um, i think the characters looks really good the way the way that she is and uh, i like the flag as well ruler starts with a great axe and is good at fighting i think i like the idea of giving her the lightning orb or we could just make her hit real hard <laughs> Yes, she tamed the orcs by brute force. Let's get it finalized. Yeah, we're just um, going to keep it ra rather simple so we can do the beginning sort of scenario and see how it works. Carissa the Red, a new ruler emerges. Explore your surroundings and expand your domain. Prepare to face your rivals and become the master of this realm. Your choices will shape the Age of Wonders. So we should start with two spells, which is quite good. So we can do Immolate and set them on fire. Berserk. Three, uh, for three turns, target-friendly unit gains Berserk. <clears throat> it is uncontrollable and always attacks the closest target. If no enemy is in range, it will attack its allies. Jesus. And then it gets three temps. That's really good. So we can enrage our orcs and have a good time. So we could focus on blasting things. I like the the idea of some of this. Enemy units in a one hex radius. Deal 10 fire damage. That's like an AOE. Ignite is a target enemy. So you can target an enemy to do super damage. Or you can sort of set them all on fire if they're in a close proximity to one another. Uh, let's go for the close proximity spell. Oh no, I just start with these. Okay, I got all three. Nice. So I think the first thing we'll work on here is food. Food seems like a good way, good first thing to 
to start on. I think this is one of the unique, like from the options that we've picked, this is one of the unique um, buildings that you get here. So you get knowledge and draft, which is quite nice. So we're going to go for food, um, gold, and then probably look to do... Uh, well, this is going to take quite some time, actually. So we'll focus on this food storehouse and then get a unit, too. Um, I don't know how big this map is, but I think we'll go straight into building units. So we'll grab ooh, shield bash. Base 90% of target unit becoming stunned. Oh, so you can stun units with these guys. That's really good. And the skirmisher... Throws a projectile at unit. Sundered defense. Right. That's real good. Okay, yeah. We'll grab another one of these and start sundering some defense if we can. I wonder what's that. It looks like resources. So I think we'll go and capture that first. And send our scout in another direction. What is this? The abandoned works of a cartographer exploring the world. Move your army to reveal an unexplored location. Sounds good. This is a wonder. We've got a small monster den here as well. So these tend to um, invade neighboring regions, and then if one's next to you, they can eventually start trying to raid your lands, which is, can be very annoying. So this wonder will give me access to the influence and the mana. That's quite good. And you get two knowledge per turn based on the research posts in your provinces. Adds the blessed soul unit to the rally of lieges. Wow. This looks like it could be quite a powerful tier three unit. Yeah. Whew. That's something we can look at getting. And then with our main army, we'll come and fight these snake boys. Storm scale serpents. They do physical and electrical damage. When this unit is hit by a melee attack, the attacker sustains four lightning damage. Ah, so they when you, they, the more hits they take, the more you get hurt. Cool. So they're like a tanky unit. They've got a lot of HP too. Okay. Well. We'll do an auto combat, see what the result is. Yeah, okay. We might look to fight this then, since we lost a unit. In fact, we will. There's probably an argument to be made to uh, wait for my unit to come out, but I wanted to see what the uh, what they looked like. Damn, they look scary. Getting some Harry Potter vibes for sure. Some basilisk, baby basilisks. Okay, so our leader, which we will take a look at. Nice. That battle axe looks badass. Doesn't look very orky, but it looks badass. So what what are they going to do? So they can move to here. So if we stay out of their range. Sort of move up here. Try and get some flanks and sunders with the skirmish unit. Do a big focus. Make that shield wall. Okay, so they just sort of chilled. Alright, let's try and get these guys sundered. Oops. Lower their defenses. Whew, nice. Some decent damage and... Oh, they're bleeding as well. Nice. Well, what can we do here? Yeah, charge strike sounds like a good plan. We'll do that. Run straight in there. Kaplow. Ah, this unit can't get too close. Um, well, what we'll do is we'll stand here because it blocks them getting round to our range unit, and we don't want that to happen. And we'll bolster defenses as well. So hopefully we should be able to endure their, their round. We've also got spells to use, which could change the dynamic of the battle. Um, what's this one? 
So it's got 30 hit points left. We could try setting it on fire. But I think immolating might be the play to get both of them and hopefully they're both set on fire. Or I could uh, whiff that a little bit. <laughs> Okay, we just tickled the pickle a little bit. Nothing major. Nice. Got some good retaliation damage there. Oh! Damn. The Red Queen is not messing around. Nice. Now we can go back to sundering this guy. We grazed them, but we still got the sundered defense, and that is the important part here. So we'll look to see how much damage we can deal with this lady. Nice. <laughs> we are stomping. I don't know what that auto resolve was saying. So we sh Ooh, there's a chance we might not kill this, but it's it says we will, so it depends on our rolls. But we could maybe try and stun it instead to guarantee. Yeah, I think we'll do that. 99% chance of stunned for one turn. I've never seen the stun, so... Oh, nice. So they are stunned now, right? Might have just wasted my turn. <laughs> Where's the status effect? I'm pretty sure it said it was stunned. I think that's what that symbol means. But it looks like we bolstered as well once we did that. So that's quite useful. So you go like do a defensive mode. Yeah, they're stunned. So it's back to us already. That's amazing. Let's see if we can get another sundered attack. Oh, we missed. Nice. Yeah, we did much better than the um, auto resolve in that one. And this is one of the great things about this game. So you can test the auto resolve, see what kind of outcome it is. And if it's acceptable, you can keep it and you won't have to fight the fight. Or you can um, go, nah, I can definitely do better than that, and then try yourself. Ah, and there's that mechanic where you get extra draft and gold for the turn, which is very good. I like that a lot. It's a sort of like an extra trickle of income. Hmm. See, Searing Blades could be a very good bonus, because we can, because you get extra damage versus burning targets, right? Yeah, let's just go for Searing Blades first, because we do have spells to set enemies on fire. And we'll pass the turn for now. And we shall jump back into our base just to heal. And we'll keep scouting around, see what we can find. Ooh, there's a sort of battlefield remnants. Moving on to this will give you access to some draft and possibly an item. That sounds like a very good thing to pick up. <clears throat> so how this sort of feels is it's more of a beginning scenario, just so you can get used to the game because the uh, actual levels that you create yourself do play very similar to this, if not the same. Ooh, we found some borders. See what this is. Nice, we got a whole load of extra draft. Oyster Reef gives access to a bloom of valuable oysters and 10 extra gold when it annexed. It's very good. Send our scout this way, see what we can find. Got our next unit available. We'll drop her in the army and pick up some more warriors. So we need a tanky front line. And we'll pass that turn. What have we got here? It's like a cat people. See a... Meeting Apprehensive Obscurium. Okay. See a Z Zazara Spellslinger of the Free City of Obscurium. 
greets you nervously, as they might invoke your wrath at any given moment. Well met, Curtis of the Red. We purring mystics. I like how they're sort of... Um, <laughs> they're making sort of uh, references to the, the to them being cats. It's very good. So they've heard many stories about the torment of shadows you went through and the power you wield. We hate to imagine what you forsook. Forsook? Yeah, it's like forsake, right? To earn it. Hopefully you will curb any potentially power-hungry tendencies as you make your way through these lands. So they don't want to be invaded is what they're saying. So we can give her one of our Whispering Stones to start neg negotiations and gradually improve um, our allegiance together. Or their allegiance to me, rather. Let me see if the people of... I'm just going to call them Ob. Of Ob are of interest. Until we meet again, mortal. <laughs> Let's have a look at Ob. So they're indifferent with us. The purring mystics. I mean, we could take them over if we wanted to. Ah, we can get some new bonuses. Defeating an infestation grants you a unit based on the infestation defeated. That's quite nice. I think we will pick that up because we're going to clear some infestations soon. Mm -hmm. um, and in the meantime, we'll just keep exploring. It could be nice to have an ally close on our borders. Doesn't look like very favorable territory either. Okay, yeah, we'll ally with these. Let's give them the Whispering Stone. Boost allegiance with influence. Cool. Yeah, I think that's all fine. Uh, let's see. So next turn, we've got these two unlocked. Let's see what next infrastructure building we can go for. We were looking in, looking at improving our gold soon, but perhaps a workshop which will improve our production and uh, how fast we build units might be the next smart move. Yeah, because then we'll be able to build our infrastructure sooner. I think this is a very good idea. And then for looking to claim territory, I think in the first instance, instances, we'll go for food. And there's a bonus food resource here, so we'll get 20 extra food. This will help our population grow, and then we can claim more tiles and start working on things that will give us, you know, more production or more gold. All very good resources, for sure. I think the general system that I've found to work quite well, and I haven't played for too long, but I tend to find that food and production are quite a king um, in the openings, and I like to keep my gold income at about 100 in the early game while I'm building up. This looks like an evil unicorn. <laughs> oh my god, what are these? These are something else. These are... <laughs> They've got like angels? Angel zealots as some sort of nightmarish worm. <laughs> and then led by a mystical unicorn. That is one crazy army. Let's not go over that way anytime soon. We've got some rank 2 units here. A bannerman and a war shaman. So they're two support based units. And they also have magical attacks as well. And they also have a ranged unit too. And this is tier 3 unicorn. These scary worm things are tier 2. It's also got a rank as well, jeez. And these zealots are tier 1. Okay, let's end that turn. So it looks like we're actually going into the evilness. Oh, because of ruthless raiders. Nice. We could help the city stay out and start killing some of these things. But it's quite risky, apparently. What do these do? Astral Pursuit. Teleports to the unit, the target unit and deals damage to it. Cosmic Spark. Deals 12 lightning damage, 12 fire damage, and 12 frost damage. That is a lot of damage. Let's not fight those just yet. That doesn't sound like a wise move. But let's keep exploring. See what we can find in our surrounding area. And then we might come... Yeah, and then we will, in fact, come back up here and probably clear these out. Uh, check this out and look to clear the small monster den since we just we are working on being able to get bonuses for clearing out these den these dens ooh mystical tree 
Mirror fields. Ah, it's another window. That's very cool. Powerful astral currents converge at this location. Rather than forming an ordinary mana node, these energies have crystallized into a forest of shimmering trees. Incri intricate branches and deep... Oops. <laughs> uh, meandering root systems suggest an interconnectedness to much in the universe. Souls, worlds, even ages. Time and space have no meaning here. That is very cool. And sounds incredibly mystic. I think we'll look to get this knowledge stash as well. Oh, it's guarded. Never mind. <laughs> we'll just keep exploring with this unit then. Nice. Our searing blaze blades are ready. I think we definitely get a Pryomancer because then we can start setting things on fire. And this will work quite well with the searing blades combo. We could look to enchant our units with this, and it will cost us mana per turn. But I think that sounds fine and cool. So let's do that. Our orcs will have flaming attacks. Just sounds so cool. Alright, let's bring her this way. And this guy in there. Um, and then we'll look to go defeat this. Next on the business or on the cards, we shall grab maybe another melee unit. We've got two Sundering attacks. We want to put a Mage unit here, really, but we haven't unlocked a Fire unit. Maybe we can save our income for now. That sounds like a good plan. So after the workshop, we will get the Vendor. Oh, we can get the Town Hall as well, which will give us access to Furies, a ranged unit and a War Shaman. Poison Blast and Invigorate. I think for the Invigorate, this could be a quite a good worthwhile unit. So let's grab that. What's our stability looking like? Five overall. We're probably going to want to boost that too. Um, we're also going to take a hit to our mana income, so getting that up would be good. And then we'll look at the tavern. Uh, we can also get a new location for our city. I'm thinking about building a mine sort of central area over here. I think we'll grab this because we have a gold node already here. So if I build a gold mine, the gold vein will give plus 10 and the mine income will be plus 5. So we get 15 gold. Or I can build a quarry which will give us 5 production and the 10 gold. I think we could use some extra production and gold. And then we'll definitely continue building some more farms up this way. Aww. Yeah, she's going over there. Ah, we've got a new piece of tech to do. Tier 1 units cost less upkeep. That's quite handy. We could get the ability to embark into the ocean. And we're still working on the other ones. Oh, that's a very good one. Extra spell points. Yes, please. I think we'll definitely look look out for that. Um, But less upkeep cost for our units sounds good yeah that boosts us to 100 income i like that you don't have to spend those as well by the way so if if you want to save your imperium for example for something else you can definitely do that we absolutely will enchant our melee units oh damn they all oh, the, the skirmishers get access to it as well that's cool uh, I suppose they do have a melee attack as well, don't they? Those fire axes look so awesome. We got a piece of advice. Low food income. Oh dear. Um, I think we'll spend some Imperium to... We don't have that low food income. How strange. Three turns as well. Okay. Well... In that case, we'll wait a turn and then spend some Imperium to boost our population and then we'll grab another farm. Ooh, what is this? A mission. Trade negotiations. During a lengthy discussion on trade terms, you discover an exquisite spider hatchling. Ooh. A spider hatchling bell mounted on the wall of... Seer Zasra Spellslinger of Ob. 
<laughs> you admire the craftsman craftsmanship of the object, even though the whispering stone, you can sense the, the powerful energy flowing from the spider hatchling. This is an artifact that belongs in the horde of Godir, not on the wall of a seer. Okay. So they've noticed the my interest in the object and smirks. Your fascination with the, my spider hatchling bell flatters me. But only a generous offer can convince me to part with it. We can offer gold for it. Trade the spider hatchling bell for your immortal wisdom. Jesus. Let's not do that. That is certainly a spectacular spider hatchling bell. You must be very proud. And we can trade Imperium. I don't want your frivolous trinket. And impacts are... I mean, gold is probably the best way to get this. Because we want to get the Priomancer. We don't want to spend our Imperium on this. Yeah, I think gold's going to be the way. We can spare a little bit of gold. So we will attract population. Um, and we can grab a farm. Over this way. Oh, you get extra food for rivers. Oh, that's cool. I didn't notice there was little bonuses like that. I noticed the minus two here for being next to a swamp or it being swamp lands. Yeah, it's swamp lands. Let's get it along the river. There's an iron deposit up here as well. Definitely more uh, more tile, uh, more room to get production. Yeah, we want to make continue to make our way up this way. And the reason I'm fighting a lot of these independent armies is you can get experience points and level up your heroes. Wow, that auto combat was decisive. Yeah, we don't need to fight that. We got some nice bonuses. Draft, gold, and production. The production was from the resource that that unit was guarding. Very handy stuff. Ooh, a watchtower. Crystal thicket. Oh, that's the same as this one over here, but named differently. Cool. I didn't know that was possible. <laughs> Alright, we're not quite there yet for for our mage, but we will be soon. Our ruler did level up though. So when she kills units, she gets temporary hit points and strengthened. It's quite good. Could boost her defense. Primal strike. So deal extra damage for our first attack in combat. Searing, we could get access to searing weapons for her. Sprint. Channel power. Magic attacks gain 80% damage until the end of next turn. We could get some lightning damage based things. A buff for accuracy and resistance. Oh, they. No, sorry. Status resist. Sorry, magic attacks ignore up to one status resistance and gain extra accuracy. This is a. A defensive one so you get resistance against magic and status resistance as well it's very good extra experience you can get a restore so it's like a heal um, and you, and some heal over turn as well I like the idea of having access to a heal that would be good to get how do I get this learn two more support skills to unlock this all right well we'll work on that so we'll have access to a heal now so we can keep something alive that we would want to keep alive and we'll wait a turn negotiations succeeded our diplomatic state with ob is now a pact of cooperation good news proceed very good so we're in a trading state they are neutral okay well we're going evil so hopefully they decide to go evil if anything what can we trade we can pay gold and get a bunch of stuff Ooh, Tranquility Pool. That would be good to get. I don't know what i do with the Spider Hatchling Bell. Maybe it's a magical item. So if we inspect our hero. Yes, it is. Summon a tier one spider. Okay. I'm not complaining. Ah, something has happened. Meeting hostile Primo Nebula. Okay, another free city. Seer Seville's Mystery of the Free. Man, these names. I'm just going to call it Seer SM <laughs> of the Free City PN. 
<laughs> nah, Primal Nebula, that one's easy. Greets you with hostility, wow. We purring mystics of pre... I'm just gonna... Yeah, I'm just gonna abbreviate it so it's easier. So we purring mystics of PN will fight for our freedom and stand against anyone who threatens our free city. Even when they are led by a fire queen like you, the blood of invaders, thieves, and spies will nourish the fields. Mm, okay. So be it. <laughs> so we found them up north. They're not very happy with us. Oh, they're at war with us already. Damn. Okay. Well, that gives us someone to target in, in a way. Interesting. So I wonder if that's who I... We won't have any enemy players and our enemies will be the city-states. So this one can pop along here. The Spring of Youth. Ooh, it's a food-based one. Extra stabilities for fishery, farm, and wood forester in city domain. Friendly units are healed for 30 hit points at the end of a strategic turn. So in that, it'll be in the domain of this wonder. Adds Spring Fairy, Summer Fairy, Autumn Fairy, and Winter Fairy to the Rally of Leisures. So you get all the fairies. Nice. This lush location is fed by a magical wellspring that flows directly from the Fey realm. Mystical waters attract all manner of creatures, unaware that they are potential victims to trick, to tricks of the fairy folk. Though what a fairy considers mischief can be potentially deadly to others. Even the most powerful beings should proceed with a measure of caution. What is this? Haste berries. When annexed, you get 20 uh, military resource. That's quite good. It's got a lot of crows. Hmm. There's another unit here. This is the gold vein. But we want to clear this monster then before it gets out of control. Keep exploring. Actually, was this might be able for us. We might be able to pick this up, so I'm going to head that way. Nice. We've got the Pryomancer. Ooh, what's this? Friendly units in one hex gain three radius. Sorry, gain three. Ooh, crit chance. Ooh. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> crit chance sounds real good. So we can definitely grab a Pryomancer now. We're working on the next tier of city and a shrine. We definitely need to work on happiness. We're on minus five now. Jeez. Our mana income hasn't been hit too too hard, but it's not too high either. You can... So you can focus the different resources. So if you're going for a heavy summon build, you could probably focus a lot more on mana. Um, and that way you can use uh, spells that appear here. So things like Searing Blades would appear here, or if you can summon a unit. Um, my best example of that would be the golem that I could have researched. So you'd be able to summon golems. And you use your mana for that. Right, let's fight these guys. Oh, this is going to be easy. I don't think we need to watch this fight. Wow, they did some damage, though. What? They are tier 2, though, I suppose. Eh, I feel like we could fight this and d take less damage. Let's give it a go. See what happens. I do like fighting these battles, because there's lots of things to think about. I also want to see um, the fire attacks in, in action. I think that would be really cool. Ah, uh, they summoned a unit. That's what happened. We can also do that. Yes, we have spiders too. Okay, where do we want to make our stand? I think this is a quite a nice little region here. There's a little bit of sort of pathway around. 
we can hold this choke point and have a hill advantage. I'm not sure if the hills give you any bonus combat bonuses in this, but we shall find out. Uh, this unit can flank around. This one can stay in formation. Our leaders already completed their action. Ah, the spider can act immediately. Okay, then the spider can flank around too. Does the shield wall get real big? Hmm, not sure about that. Alright, let's pass the turn. See what our enemies do. So they're coming. They've activated a defense mode too. Well, we're still not in position yet, so we don't quite want to cause too much trouble. Hmm. We are in range of all of them, no matter what now. Apart from the spider, but once things move, we will be. Um, I think you can step one to the side. Oh, they can still get you. <laughs> We'll step you there. And our leader can come round to We'll keep boosting the defense. You can go defense mode. You can too. So we can cast some spells. We could immolate. Yeah, we'll we'll do immolation. Actually, we'll, we might want to wait. How long does burning last for? Hmm, I'm not sure. Let's just try it. We can experiment. So it doesn't look like any of them caught on fire. <laughs> Perfect. So if you haven't, if you have, if you've definitely moved everything how you want, um, and you end your turn, it'll make it so that the units go into defense mode automatically, which is quite nice. Wow. Yeah, I definitely feel this game has a big defender's advantage if you've got things like shield wall and other mechanics like that. Oof. The damage. Are we going to get a flank here? We are. Very good. It resisted the poison. Oh no. Let's see what our leader can do. Oh, shame we can't get behind them. If we leave their zone of control, they'll get an attack against us. I think we definitely rush the leader in. Nice, we caused bleeding. Our skirmish unit can finish off the hogs. Very good. Um, yeah, I think we just clobber the spiders. I'm gonna get this guy to rush in. Wee, Slap. <laughs> ah, so it's 18 combined damage between poison, fire, and physical. Very good. Uh, we don't need to cast any more spells. So, so if you do want to f have a big spell focus as well, um, ma a high mana count would be good because the combat spells that you do cast actually cost mana. It's not like loads, but you know, you're gonna want a big store either way. Uh, let's sunder your armor and do it again. Oh, <laughs> just took six javelins to the face. That's gotta hurt. Um, yeah, we don't need to retry that. We dominated. So we got food. A nightmare mount. Ooh. So it lowers enemy morale. 
and is very speedy. We got an inferno puppy. How cute. That is awesome. Some really good loot. I don't think we have a mount for our leader, so having a mount now would actually be quite good. Oh, we've got another skill point too. Oh, we've got fighty skills we can unlock as well. Oh, extra crit chance, extra damage, killing momentum. Units regain one action point when killing another unit. That's really strong. But you do need five skills in warfare, so that'll be a later thing. Because we're going down the support tree at the moment to get some bonuses. And then these are magic-related things too. That's quite good. Frost. Might do a Frost game at some point, because getting access to this... Cause so like the fire um, tree that I've gone down, there's a lot of um, spells and skills that play into one another and boost each other's effectiveness. Um, and it's the same for the frost tree as well. And there's a lot of different ways to play this. You don't actually have to focus on dealing damage and stuff with your units. You can play a more defensive style as well. And uh, both are equally as good. I kind of like this, just our units slowly gaining XP. Having 10 extra hit points is good too. I think we'll get the XP thing. That sounds fun. Um, we'll definitely get a horse. Why can't we put this on? Disabled because of equipped item. Great axe. Ah, so we can't ride um, a horse and use a great axe. Okay, well, if we find any magical items later on or anything like that, we can always do use this to uh, use a different weapon. Okay. Yeah, this, this fire dog can come in here with me and then we can clear out some more enemies in the neighboring areas. We're also gonna look for a place to settle. There's a lot of good territory around here, to be honest. And I think a large cage with a trapped creature. Hmm. Don't know actually. We could do maybe do a coastal city down here. There's a city here too. There's also a city here, I think. This could be a good place. We don't want it to uh encroach too much on the capital. Well it might be a good city settle south actually with this temple here. That's it for this episode. The second episode is coming out soon, so bye for now.